So talk to me, you mentioned, mentioned endometriosis. Talk to me a little bit about how you address, again, I think the bigger uteruses, we, we've talked about that a little bit as well, but things like endometriosis or you know, pelvic scarring. How does that change your approach to V notes? I mean, are you addressing stage four endo with V notes these days? Are you are there certain cases where you're just like this is just not appropriate? Like, how do you address that? What we teach is that endo is a contraindication for V notes, and and I think there's no need to be dogmatic about V notes. We got to think where our patient benefits most of the of the technique. And I think some patients will be better off with V notes. Some will be better off with a laparoscopy. Some may be better off vaginally. Some may be better off with a robot or, or an abdominal hysterectomy. I think we need to master the technique so we can tailor them to the patient's needs and not try and, op- and squeeze every patient into one little box. So I think there's no reason to do a case where you worry about a posterior colpotomy, whether it's going to be safe or not. If you even have that thought, you should put in the scope and just make sure it's safe. So I think from that point of view, we always teach that endometriosis is a contraindication, previous rectal surgery is a contraindication, patients who've had pelvic abscesses, severe PIDs, where you don't know what your Pacha Douglas is going to be like, is a, is a contraindication. That being said, you know, in research, we try and check where the boundaries are and, and where V-notes can lead us. And I do think with the increased visualization that it gives us, you know, there is in time going to be a space for it in more complex procedures. You know, we're starting to do radical hysterectomies for cervical cancer now as well. And it's, it's, it's an amazing visualization you get. I've done a number of, of, of rectovaginal endometriosis cases, but that's n- not something that I, you know, I like to talk about in teaching. It's, it's just a whole lot more challenging and, and you need to be very familiar with, with V-notes anatomy before you go there. So, so I think the short message is just don't go there. You know, it's not, it's not <laughs> necessary. Just keep it safe and do it laparoscopically. Yeah. Not easy laparoscopically either, obviously. But, I th- you know, I think, again, as I'm thinking about the anterior challenges, like are there potential benefits from below? Maybe if you can address the nodule and feel it, you can work around it, start laterally. I can see where in the hands of a skilled v surgeon who's been doing this a long time, is, are there potential benefits? And that's that, that'll be interesting to see develop over time. Again, you make a really good point. You see the details very well. That's exactly what we're trying to do now in, in research is we try and do a combined approach where we operate endoscopically laparoscopically and v with two surgeons at the same time for radical endo because what is the most difficult is from above is the lower part. If the nodules low down on the rectum, halfway the vagina, it's difficult. If you come from below, that part's not difficult endoscopically. It gets more difficult as you get higher and higher. And if you use the best of, best of both worlds, you know, you can meet each other in the middle. So that's, that's what we're trying now. We've just made our first publications on that. But I think that's, that's far away from being routine. But, but I think the opportunity is there. There's definitely times when you want to go, what's behind there? I know. I think if, it, if it's clear behind there, then we're good. But the potential to do both, and that's something I've thought about as I try to visualize my first cases and visualize like how I would do these popping a scope in from above and watching myself entering in and seeing where I am. So I, I can match my vaginal procedures to my laparoscopic visual cues. Is that something that you recommend? I think that's a fantastic way to keep your learning curve safe is any moment where you doubt in your entry, put in a five millimeter scope in the umbilicus. You know, the patient won't mind it. They'll barely see the scar. And You'll see what you're doing and, and someone can hold the camera from above while you're operating from below. And like that, you know, you safely build up your confidence in, in your implementation. I think it's a fantastic way to start. Yeah. 